Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about how these media outlets, including comic book resources, can ruin everything, even Christmas. That's right. Uh, but they're not wrong on everything. They're not wrong. But they really go, they, they go on about fascism and things you'd expect also. Yeah, I really have to wonder what these uh, back channel slack talks are like. I don't know. When they're coming up with story ideas, like who can we piss off today? But, but here's the thing. They missed a whole bunch of uh, traumatizing Christmas specials because I'm finding that most of the, of the Christmas specials out there are traumatizing in some way. Um, and we thought it'd be fun to do uh, our discussion of traumatizing classic Christmas specials because back in the you know 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even 90s, kids weren't pussies and they could handle it. They're trying to scare the Jesus into you. Well, well, most of it was involved with Santa, so I hope they're not trying to scare the Santa into you. Just... Whoa! <laughs> we're going to talk about that yeah, one. Ironically right. enough, they have that thumbnail pulled up. So before we get into it, speaking of kids and children and, and uh, Christmas and all of that, uh, Geeky is doing a toy drive. If you missed the memo, check out the pinned comment below. Uh, she's using proceeds from her shop to buy lots of toys for kids, and we've been taking uh, car carfuls of. Well, that was stuff for a couple days ago. We have a whole other load whole in the more. car. So, um, yeah, you can go out to the shop. We live in a very economically depressed area to begin with. Of course, 2020 has hit this area very, very hard. Um, there seems to be more uh, angel tree kids this year that I've seen. But oh, yeah, I, we're not yeah. seeing the toys for tots around here like we used to either. No. So, um, and the Salvation Army is, is handling the toy distribution. The issue is. Um, that the kids that don't get chosen or get bought for, they have to take money out of their budget to go and, and do it, which they have no problem doing, except they normally need 24000 minimum to continue for a year, and they're coming into 2021 with like $6,000. And they don't know what they're going to do because they couldn't, around here, we couldn't have the bell ringers out because they were getting sick and yeah. a bunch of other issues. So I figured if we could do something to help them out, and um, all the proceeds on my store are going to do that between, I think, up till... I was gonna say the 10th, but I might push it to the 11th because they said we could come a little extra behind then. But my mom is gonna give me, Mama Sparkles is giving me some more pouches because we keep selling out of them. I'm going to her house today. I'm grabbing some more pouches. So keep paint, watching the page because I will be adding stuff later today. Some more pillows, some pouches, some other things. We'll be at it. Yeah, it's, yeah, there, it's gonna be, uh, a lot of this is actually your convention stock. It we was, they used to sell these at conventions. Yeah, we did conventions for a number of years. We sold comics, we sold prints. Uh, we sold Geeky's uh, handmade uh, geek crafts, and we obviously didn't do conventions this year. Right. And, um, we're too busy anyway. Yeah. But there's many times that, you know, they, we, we were in bad situations because, you know, layoffs or whatever, and the pillows are what saved our butts. So um, I figure since we were blessed enough that it saved us so many times that I will try to pay it forward to the other people. There you go. Um, so there we go, guys. That is That is our... Uh, hopefully our Christmas present uh, to two kids this year. And thank you. Thank yes, you very thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, even just watching the video, thank you, because we've kicked yes. in some of our own money. We've been kicking in our own money. So just watching the videos and like, you know, commenting and, you know, sharing that kind of stuff helps too. So we're able to do more. Um, anyway, speaking of Christmas, I just thought it'd be fun to talk about these shows and add some of our own because, you know, the world needs more fun. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about this because, you know, people are probably searching for Christmas specials this year. Probably have more time to watch Christmas specials this year than previous years. I and don't. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, right. We don't have time. We've been trying to make time with Pinky Boo because she keeps wanting to watch a lot of older shows. But um, comic book resources tends to suck the fun out of everything. Yeah, uh, don't they? they're not 100% wrong on some of these stuff. They're not. But, of course, they have to bring fascism and Yahtzees and all that crap into it. Uh, but this is not the first time that they've... Uh, taking pot shots. Oh, really? They did this before? Yeah, they did. This is uh, 2017. They did 15 horrifying kids holiday oh, specials. Look, I didn't see that one yet. Yeah, we'll we're going to pull one. up some of these. The Smurfs. And yeah, that was on both Some lists. of these I agree with. We actually watched this the other night in the background. Oh, as, did you? I, as, I didn't see it. Yeah, you didn't hear goodness makes the bad. I did hear that. That's all I saw was the yeah, goodness makes the yeah. badness go away. And I'm like, oh, it's like modern cartoons. Yeah. So um, we'll talk about that. Some off the wall Rankin Bass shows, which I'm a huge fan of Rankin Bass. Actually. He is. He has a whole bunch of them. And I bought most of them for him. Yeah. Um, anyway. If if I had unlimited money, I would actually buy the uh, the puppets. Mm -hmm. And I would store them someplace. I don't know where. Uh, but they're In a vault? In a vault. <laughs> belongs in a museum or my house. 
Uh, there we go. So and donate it to the museum. Yeah. I mean, or let them borrow it. Lend it to the they museum. Can, they can borrow. They can, it can they be can on borrow. lending. Okay. Anyway. All right. All right. So let's look at their, their, their traumatizing list. I have a bunch more I added. Um, okay, coming from CBR.com, these holiday classics are supposed to fill the heart with joy, but they really just leave viewers with uncomfortable questions and nightmares. Again, kids in the 60s, 70s, and 80s had more balls than kids today. Yeah, let's talk about the, the, the first 90s one. 90s, too. Yeah, 90s kids were pretty tough, too. Um, I don't know what the hell happened. But Charlie Brown Christmas, they're, they're making fun of the fact that Charlie Brown was made fun of, that Charlie Brown was the punching bag for the entire neighborhood. Now, the comics, they never do explain why Charlie Brown is so despised. The very first Peanuts comic strip was, there's Charlie Brown, good old Charlie Brown. Oh, I hate him. I hate that kid. Yeah. I mean, so they're people not, just hate. He's got a punchable face. They're not wrong. They're like, you know, they ridicule his effort and berate him and all that. No one ever, you know, changes their behavior. But that was kind of what happened. And when I was a kid, their bullies were bullies. And there were times, I know when I was in sixth grade, the whole class just stopped talking to me for no reason. Um, they were taking turns picking on certain other kids. I always talked to those kids so you know they wouldn't be alone. But when it came time for me to be picked on, um, nobody else would talk to me, um, even the ones I helped. So I went around for a, a, a while with no one speaking to me at all, just to be bullies because they were total dicks. And, you know, kids were bullied and stuff and all the time. And you know what? They weren't never confronted or told to change their behavior. Even now, you have bullies. And when kids complain about them, the kids that complain get punished or the kids that fight back get punished. Um, this is kind of the way life is and it sucks and, it's, and I hate it, but it, it, it is. And I love how uh, they're, I love the last part. It's, it, it's, and it's never quite clear if they're espousing or just criticizing their capitalist illusions. Yeah, they're like, they ignore his direction, ridicule his efforts, and berate him for selecting a subpar tree. Uh, they said it's not heartwarming, it's just an object of nostalgia. They did not mention that Linus preaches to everybody and forces his Christianity on the, these yeah, kids. How did, yeah, right? They didn't mention that. He makes everybody sit there and listen to his religious spiel. But, but you know, they're going on about capitalism, though. We had to do capitalism in there because capitalism's bad. I think we get fascism in here, too. Oh, they get fascism in here, Oh, they too. do. I forgot about this one. Most people forgot. The Will Vinton Claymation Christmas. Now, here's a funny story. Uh, Leica, the animation studio, mm -hmm. was actually Will Vinton's studio. And uh, the guy who's in charge of it, who's actually the guy who directed uh, Bumblebee, mm -hmm. his daddy worked for Nike, bought him this, as I understand it. And I, I got to look into the story a little bit more, but as I understand it, Will Vinton basically got pushed out of his own animation studio and it became Leica. Well, uh, that it, happens, that happens. Yeah, so even though they do some really good movies, Coraline and Kubo are incredibly good movies, um, you know, knowing that Will Vinton was pushed out the way he was pushed out. The California Raisins guy, right? That he was pushed out the way he was. Kind of leaves a bad taste in my yeah. mouth. Yeah. So there, there's your reason to think it should be on the crap list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we just talked about this the other night. Yes, we did. Yeah. So there's nothing more Christmassy than fighting fascism. That's right. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. That's the moral of Santa Claus is coming to town, which Chris Kringle assumes the identity of Santa Claus to avoid capture by the Burgermeister Meister Burger, who rules over Sombertown with an iron fist, burning children's playthings. Kind of like the media. You're, you can't have any fun because mm -mm. we're going to make you feel really bad for it. And then we're going to take you a task on Twitter. Right. And you have um, to, and if everything is, no you're not allowed to have color, everything has to be gray because they insist on it. Just like you, you have to like their new, their new takes on shows, whether you like them or not, or they will, they will hunt you down and, and punish you for, for like, for not agreeing with them and, you know, not picking their side. But we, and they're talking about the winter warlock and. Yeah. They're leaving out one major uncomfortable point of this. Now I do like this special. It's a so classic. Why is it uncomfortable because Mr. and Mrs. Kringle's romance? Because it's not Mr. and Mr. Kringle? Well, that's what I'm saying. They're, they said that's uncomfortable, how much time they spend on romance with Mr. and Mrs. Claus. That's not the worst part. The worst part is if you sit on my lap today. A kiss of toy is a price you'll pay. Yeah. Our son likes to make fun of that all the time. Yeah. It's, uh, He's like, it's, there's nothing pedo about that. We ignore that completely. But we complain about... we're mad about Mr. and Mrs. Kringle having a romance. Uh, Star Wars Holiday Special. A glorious shit show. I don't know what else to say. Um, it was something. Uh, yeah, it, it was. It did introduce us to Boba Fett, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, animated version of Boba and Fett. And Life Day. And Life Day, which they, you know, Disney strip mined that years later. Mm -hmm. So Rudolph. And this actually, this is not 
Well, okay, that's not completely wrong. So in the story, Rudolph's emotionally abusive parents reject and demean him, and Santa's a real jerk. That's not untrue. That is completely true. But they said that Hermie is is <laughs> coded gay. It's coded homophobia and more ableism than misfit toys. And the not-so-heartwarming lesson of Rudolph is that bigotry and bullying are completely socially acceptable, at least until the somebody you're tormenting is of use. Okay, well, a couple things here. One, the coded homophobia, Hermie, basically he wanted to be an, a dentist, not an elf. And so the end, the end of the story basically was that Hermie was allowed to go be what he wanted to be. So it's not code of homophobia. Basically, it was that he was accepted for the fact that he was different, and that was fine. Uh, ableism, and the misfit toys. The misfit toys weren't, you know, weren't were rejected for you know being misfit toys, and they were on the island. But they did go eventually and make sure that all the misfit toys were were given homes. Yes, and then found the place they belong. So you're completely wrong in that regard. Um, Rudolph, it is true that you know he didn't want him until he was of use. And Squeaky makes that joke all the time. Santa was a dick. He's like moment. he's like you know basically what we learned is if you. If you, your special needs people should be ignored unless they're useful, and that's what that's what uh, yeah. King will say. But the other two points that they brought up, that's not necessarily true because um, it's not homophobia. Because it's co- even if he's coded gay, they eventually they all accepted him and, un- and understood that he wasn't going to do what they want they were doing, and that was fine with them. And he was able to become a dentist. And the misfit toys were found that they were when they were discovered, they were found that homes were found for them. So they fit in for right. people that would accept them and love them. Those were actually good points, not bad ones. So I'm going to argue with you on that one for sure. The snowman. Now, snowman's messed up. The snowman is beautifully drawn. It was all done in colored pencil. Uh, an amazing piece of animation. But it's depressing as hell. And, uh, it really is. And here's the thing. Um, they said that the problem with it is because uh, it's a metaphor for coping with death. And it says, unlike Frosty, this one can't be revived with Christmas magic, which was the point. In response to criticism about the animated special's unhappy ending, the author replied, the snowman melted, my parents died, animals die, flowers die, everything does. Now, I will say this. Um, it's a hard thing to deal with no matter what age you are. And I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to, you know, use something like this to show, to, to, to open, it's a bit opening to talk about death with kids because it's a hard subject. It, I mean, I ended up in therapy. I'll explain that later with some of the other choices we have. Um, when I was a kid, cause I was like three and my grandpa died and I under, I, I understood more than I should, but I didn't understand it completely. So it was really bad for me, but the, this, you know, and it's sad. It makes you feel bad, but you know, you're going to have to talk about it somehow. And this, you know, is a way to, to do that. Yeah. So yeah. it sucks, but, you know, it's also an opportunity. Go ahead. The circle of life. Mm-hmm. Um, it yeah. It is really sad, though. Anyway. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. That, look, you never saw the sequel where he comes back to life and he brings a snow dog with him. Mm-hmm. You know? So he came back to life. Did like, he? Yes. There's a sequel for real? Yes. There's a sequel. It actually wasn't bad. It was uh, the snowman and the snow dog. I don't but it is about death because well this they don't kill the dog do they does the dog die there's a a dog at the beginning that's an old dog and it's strongly implied that the old dog dies the boy's sad so the snowman comes and gives the boy a snow dog and then the snow dog melts and he's like oh i'm sad but then he gets a real puppy for christmas that actually is the snow dog okay let's let's change the subject because i will literally start to cry it got you in the feels, but the I snowman with, comes I back. I can't deal with doggos and 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 if they're watching a movie and there's even a, a possibility the animal's gonna get hurt, I make I make Neon go look it up online. Does the dog sure. die? Because dot com, I can't, I can't, is, yeah, because yeah, I can't, just can't do it. Well, I love the, animals, and I love kids, but they do bring the snowman back. Anyway, no, <laughs> no, that's Santa Claus is coming so, to town. Anyway, anyway, um, little drummer boy, you know. It was a bit somber. Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, this one and the second one, they were pretty dark. Um, number one, though, I, 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 I don't know if I, I have to agree. It's yeah, okay. So the Smurfs and Gargamel have to save kids from the devil. We told you back um, in the eighties, they didn't piss around. I mean, how many shows with basically like My Little Ponies fought, fought Satan, Care Bears fought Satan, Smurfs fought Satan? I mean, well, demonless s creatures that you know could be coded Satan. Coded as Satan. There you go. I, I, they, can, they can code homosexuality. I can code Satan. Coded as Satan. Well, yeah, My Little Pony, uh, you know, literally the very first episode, because they were working on, Sumbo was working on Dungeons and Dragons. So they're like, let's just have the My Little Ponies look just like the unicorn from Dungeons and Dragons and fight a monster.
creature that looks like it came right out of Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. And it was um, awesome. With rainbow power. That's right. And song. Uh, and that's how they defeat Satan in the Smurfs Christmas special is they sing it away. Goodness makes the badness right. go and, away. And they can't complain about this because they use the, they, they said, though fear not, Grandpa survived because I think Grandpa's dead, but he's not. Oh, yeah, that's right. They start with Grandpa looks like he's dead. Yep. Um, and then they survived and the Smurfs defeat the devil with the power of song. And you guys can't say a damn thing about this because how many shows of, of late have defeated evil by hugging, you know, kissing, or at like the end, end of Adventure Time? Steven, all of Steven Universe yeah. Hug the bad guys away. So you can't so say Smurfs a damn thing. It. You're not allowed to be salty about it because, you know, it, you guys have been using it for years. Now, uh, three years ago, the Smurfs Christmas special was only number 15. Uh, we had Power Rangers, Alpha's Magical this. Christmas. I did not see this. Uh, Ninja Turtles, we wish you a turtle Christmas. Didn't see that either. This is all 90s. Ah, now this is one we can get into. We, we did see this one. We, we watched, watched it the other night. Yeah, we watched it the other <laughs> so. night. Um, oh, they're yeah. mad because she battles a phallic-looking dragon. Oh, wait. So, wait. So, their Shh. complaint is they're going to complain about she because it, they're going to say the dragon looks phallic. So, we have to find some other way to make it about sex, about being a sexism and, and her being sexy and how people want to fap to she But they said she has to battle a phallic-looking dragon. She's going to circumcise him with her sword. Right. But I'm just like, you see my point, you know? And there was, if it was, if it was, like, like if it was a princess of power, if it was a princess of power, they would never bring that up. They just be like, she kicked the dragon's ass because she's a badass woman. Now it's, she has to fight the phallic dragon. She's fighting the, the powers of misogyny, personified as a dragon. If it was the Netflix, oh God. if it was Netflix, Shira, it would look like a giant badge with teeth. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Uh, and she'd fly right into the it. dragon would be a more, Head first. Would, no, I, <laughs> The dragon would be more would be a lot fatter. Um, it would be a fat dragon. It would be a fat dragon. Oh god, it would be a double trouble. It would be a big fat dragon that spits. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, Skeletor gets a puppy, and then we never see the puppy again. Uh huh. What happened to the puppy, Skeletor? That's right. Where is the puppy? Or is that Beast Man? Beast Man grew up to be. <laughs> the puppy. That's puppy grew up to be Beast. I'm just like, where did the damn puppy go? Is Beast Man housebroken? I, I don't know. Does Beast Man take a shit on Skeletor's <laughs> carpet? Is there newspapers lying around in the cartoons? No. So I'm assuming his house broken. <laughs> so they have a real Ghostbusters Christmas special. I don't remember this uh, this is probably just an episode of it. I vaguely remember this one. Uh, I do remember the I Looney do remember Tunes. that. Um, Astro Boy. Now, I did not. Know. I did not remember this one. I never saw this yeah, one. Yeah, so we'll have to look up it. I'm, I'm actually, after being corrupted by a gang of thieves, Astro Boy takes Light Ray on a heroism spree. Things take an inappropriately dark turn when Light Ray rescues a woman from being sexually assaulted by a drunken man. Merry Christmas! <laughs> The special only gets darker from there as Light Ray ends up a fugitive from the police who decide they have no choice but to blow up the robot right in front of Astro who's left weeping in the snow as the upbeat. Uh, <laughs> oh my what god. The hell? So this is like the snowman with robots. I think Astro I think this one wins. I want to see this one. I think one. this one wins. Oh I my need god. To, I need to I see this. I don't think any of my list can touch that. I need to see I'm gonna make a mental note. I have to see Astro Boy, the Light Ray robot. Christmas with the Adams family. I just saw this the other night. Oh, did you really? Your, uh, no, it was actually Thanksgiving at your parents' house. They were on they record, this episode. Yeah, they had this. They remember. record a bunch knew, of Christmas stuff. I knew that they were running something, but I didn't know it was this. Yeah, everybody's Santa for some reason. There's like five Santas. Uh, Christmas comes I, to Pac Man. I remember that one vaguely. Yeah, you know they find Santa in the snow. Santa Claus is coming to town. Do they talk about the? Um, yeah, if you sit in my lap today. See, see, a kiss, kiss. the toys the price you pay. <laughs> confirming every worst fear, every parent's worst fear about the true nature of mall Santas. Uh, yeah, but you're not going to get a Nerf gun. No. And shoot your eye out. Because the kid. Santa will say no. Uh, Invader Zim, haven't seen it. Doctor Who, the snowman last Christmas. I do have, I do remember that one. Yeah. Ah! This is on my list! This is actually on Geeky's list. Yeah, the Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, which is basically Lord of the Rings. It is! With Santa Claus. It is! Uh, I actually like it, though. I like it quite a bit. He does. He likes this one of his favorites. Well, because Rankin Bass also did the the Hobbit and a couple of Lord of the Rings adaptations, so it was kind of a good fit. It was like their Christmas shows and their Tolkien shows, and they just kind of smushed them together. This was based on uh, L. Frank Baum from The Wizard of Oz. 
you know, but it did feel more like one of their Tolkien mm-hmm. shows or Last Unicorn. Or something but it was like pretty that. messed up. But they, they, have, was. they have the, you know, they show the kid. Yeah, he says he witnesses the horrors of war, poverty, and child abuse. Um, and then he ends up being Santa Claus, and then he dies. And then spoiler, he die. spoiler, yeah. he dies. But they just they decide to bestow upon him the mantle of immortality. And that's why Santa Claus is still alive today, allegedly, supposedly, maybe. I would like to get a hold of one of those mantles. We should get a matching pair. There you go. Yeah. What about our kids? We need to get them. See, I have people who I love that. It would be a problem. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would be. Because, yeah, what well, if you were only given, like, like three mantles of immortality? And it's like, okay, you pick who's going to live with you forever, you know? If you cut them in half, do you get, like, half of immortality? Half life? <laughs> yeah. Do you get half life? If you cut them, I don't know. That would be hard. That'd be a hard decision. Like, okay, you know, we can live forever, but only one or two of you can live with me. Um, I'm going to let the rest of you die. That'd be like, that's like that's Santa's. Horrible. I don't want to talk about Santa's let's choice. Changing the subject. We already talked about having an issue with death. The Alf Christmas special. I vaguely remember that. Oh, and they the Star the Wars holidays, holiday number specials, one. number one. Yeah. Uh, they talked about some other wacko Rankin Bass ones. This is actually one of my favorites. That was on, I think I had Pinocchio. No, I mean, I didn't have Pinocchio's on here. But Pinocchio's is weird. Pinocchio's Christmas, I love it. And I love Leprechaun's Christmas Gold. That's too. on my list. Okay. Leprechaun's so, Christmas Gold so is on there. Let's talk about Geeky's list of. Okay. Uh, so I have some ones I can think of. Um, Okay, so I, t- I mentioned when I was a kid and my grandpa died when I was real little. And um, so I had this really weird thing where I understood death kind of, but I didn't quite understand what it was. And I was very upset by a lot of things. So my mom didn't know that Nestor, the long-eared Christmas donkey, has the beginning part, which his mom dies. In which his mom, like, oh, there it is! Nestor, the long-eared Christmas donkey. Um, It was absolutely... His mom dies saving him. It's heartbreaking. I freaked the freak out. And then I ended up in therapy. It was, it was, I ended up in therapy, like play therapy as a child because of all this stuff. But look how cute he is. I know. And, 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 and but suffice to say, I still don't watch Nestor. <laughs> so Nestor, um, Nestor was on my list. I also had uh, a life and measure of Santa Claus we talked about. Uh, the first Christmas snow. I like the first Christmas snow. But the first Christmas snow... It's about a little blind boy that's abused. Yes, there it is. It's on the list too. These are the wackadoo Christmas specials that, yeah. So the worst Christmas though, it's like the kid's blind and and they push him in a hole. They do. So <laughs> there's a little blind boy that winds up at a convent. I love this one because this does. is. I actually went and found it special just for him. Because usually the the Rankin Bass stuff is like really far-fetched you know we got leprechauns and magic and dragons and stuff and this is just like yeah it's a blind kid in a convent and christmas i'm like well that's pretty normal but it's got angela lansbury in it and they get this little blind boy and then yeah the, the mean kids the bullies they talk about you know charlie brown getting bullied they push his ass into a hole yeah so there you go and you know? bl- they push the blind kid into a hole so that's uh that's the the first christmas snow and then oh we had leprechaun's christmas gold leprechaun's christmas gold is a whole bunch of what the hell Yes, it is. Uh, it, it is. It's uh, so like this guy is shipwrecked on an island, and uh, when he's on, I like Night Before, Night Before Christmas. Yeah, he's shipwrecked one. on an island, and uh, their leprechauns are there, and there's a banshee, and she's trying to steal their gold by hypnotizing him, and the, the elves are all having like this, you know. Hatfields and McCoys like fighting thing going yeah, on, and, and it's just messed up and weird. And, and singing and, and dancing, and kill the damn banshee. Um, so I can't decide: is this one a Christmas special or a St. Patrick's Day special? And I think the answer is yes, because Rankin Bass, like they would do specials about one holiday, and they wind up being about something else. Like they did Jack Frost, which was a Christmas and Groundhog Day special. Mm-hmm. You know, so I guess you could run it either time of the year. And and this one could be uh, St. Patrick's or Christmas. And then they had the one Easter rabbit one where it was Easter and Christmas. Right. Uh, so, yeah, they like, they, like to, they like to cover their bases, man. Get more out of it. Right. Um, you had oh, you wanted to put, you put on here Littlest Angel, which I remember the book. I don't remember. I don't watch. I didn't watch the show, I don't believe, because I read the book and the book was enough for me as a child. Well, this had um, the version I remember had Johnny Whitaker in it from uh, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. And all I remember as a kid, I remember watching. I'm like, oh, it's Sigmund and Sea Monsters. No, it was like Johnny Whitaker jumping off of a cliff and dying and becoming an angel. I'm thinking, okay, that's great. How many kids are going to be like, oh, I can be an angel if I jump? And I did for the longest time. I thought that that's how angels were made. I thought 
that if you died, you turned into an angel. And I remember getting yelled at at Bible school. Oh, did you? When I was a kid. I was so upset because I was like, oh, yeah. Um, you know, they're like, well, what happens to you when you die? And they called on me. I'm like, oh, you turn into an angel. No, you don't. That's not biblical. How dare you? Yeah. Where did you learn this, Harrison? <laughs> I heresy? can't read. <laughs> where did you learn of this heresy? And I'm like, from the TV, with the, show, <laughs> the, the, the little redhead boy, and he turned into an angel. It looked like fun. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> oh, I need to talk to your parents. You need to read the Bible more. Yeah, so that didn't go well, and I actually quit that Bible school. I would hope so. It was vacation um, Bible school. It wasn't a vacation. No, it was uh, not. It was not a vacation um, for me. I have on here the Polar Express, because let's look at the Polar Express, shall we? Um, so you have trains that pick up kids, and then you have that one car on the train that's full of all the creepy puppets and broken things, and then you have the ghost guy on top of the train. Tom Hanks. Yeah, that's playing everything. Everything. I mean, that's horrifying enough. Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks is, is every character almost in the whole show. Tom Hanks is a hobo. Tom Hanks is Santa Claus. Tom Hanks is the little boy. Yeah. Uh, Tom Hanks is probably the creepy puppets, too. Oh, uh, probably. So, you know, that was that one I could see could be a little creepy to some kids. Um, we were watching All of the Other Reindeer. Um, that'll make children afraid of Mailman. Oh, all of Yeah, all of is pretty good, though. It is, but, fun. but, and the one part when she gets to the North Pole Junction or whatever up there, and she tells the reindeer and the people at the bar that she's going to be a, the, <laughs> the she's going to be a reindeer and she's a dog, they start picking on her, teasing her, and threatening to throw her off the roof to see if she can fly. That's a common theme. It's hilarious. Throwing people down holes off roofs, you know. But it's still a good show. It I'm was just saying, if you're going to complain about, like, these, these, you know, violence and in these shows, um... Okay, now I have a couple. We have the, what you said about the Grinch. Yeah, the Grinch, just all of it, just all of it. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> all of it's a problem. You know, the Who's are capitalists, mm -hmm. capitalistic, materialistic. You know, um, uh, they get over it by the end, so that's okay. So actually, it could be argued that they needed the Grinch to take their stuff away, so they weren't such bad capitalists. There you go, that's and they right. learned the true meaning of Christmas because of uh, you know the. Grinch stealing everything from them. There you go. Um, now I have some live action ones on here. I have um, One Magic Christmas. Oh, that was, yeah, that was pretty. One Magic Christmas, the woman, well, we'll go back to the cartoons in a minute. One Magic Christmas, the woman's husband gets killed and her kids, she thinks her kids are dead. And then she gets her kids back. And then she has to learn the spirit of Christmas. And when she learns the spirit of Christmas, it brings her husband back to life. Yeah, that's, unfortunately, it's not on any of these lists. But are you sure it wasn't down below? I thought maybe you scanned past that. No, it's it not. Was it wasn't. It's, it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's not. It does a, happen because I just yeah. saw the shirt. Um, so, yeah, that was one. Um, Prancer, too, because Prancer's dead in the first few minutes of the, of the show. Oh, that was horrifying. We didn't know that. And we put Rihanna when Squid King was little. Yeah, because Prancer like, was dead. Yeah, because we're like, oh, we like Prancer, so we pop in Prancer two. I'd never seen Prancer two, and Prancer drops dead in the beginning of the movie. It's like Prancer turned into snow or whatever he did, but he was dead. He was dead. They find um, does the little girl like find his dead carcass out? No, of the woods? I don't think they find a carcass. Do they? I don't remember. I thought like, I turned it I off. Like, I, I don't remember. It's been so long. I just know he was dead. He was dead, and I thought his like legs were sticking up in the air. And I don't. <laughs> I just know he was dead. Um, this was one of my favorites. I don't know if people remember it. Uh, well, I mean, favorites in this list. Not that it was a favorite. The Night They Saved Christmas. Yes. This was from like the early 80s or late 70s. I don't even remember. But basically. Mark Carney was Santa Claus. Right. And they're trying yeah. to save the North Pole because they're going to blow it up with dynamite for mining. Because the dad's trying to find the, the whatever the mother load because they want to save his job and um they, and he's gonna get fired and they're actually measuring their house and stuff it, like you know I think they're done with Magic Christmas too like they're gonna take it away because it's like the company house which apparently was a thing and uh, they have to save his job so they were looking at two sites and one of the sites was the North Pole where, where it's hidden and they were gonna I think blow Santa Claus the hell up to find what they're looking for. But luckily, they looked on the other site and they found what they needed. And so they didn't have to blow Santa Claus up. Yeah. Uh, that kind of remind me of what was it, like the reindeer died on Oh, on yeah, Scrooge. on Scrooge. Oh, my God. Squid King. I don't think Squid King's ever seen Scrooge. 
He needs to see Scrooge. Well, that wasn't one movie coming out where like they were having a hitman take out Santa. That's what it reminds me of. Oh, Mel Gibson. Yeah, the yeah. Movie the fat man, was it Fat Man? Yeah, fat that man was one. That's what reminds me of the Ranger died. I have Santa Claus the movie on here because Puce Juice. Uh, they're 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 basically making toys full. You know, they're they're gonna send things that explode to children uh, because they're trying to take over Christmas and they explode and could blow up your whole family. Um, and then he got in trouble for for selling toys with nails and glass in them. Yeah, John Lithgow. Yeah. yeah, even though I still like that movie. They, they got that from Saturday Night Live. Do you remember the old yes. Saturday Night Live skit where they had the bag of glass? Oh, my God. Do you remember the Christmas tree thing where you'd sing a Christmas tree and the Christmas tree would stab you? I was terrified of Christmas trees. I was little, and I saw that, and I was so afraid to sing that song. Or I was afraid of, of Christmas trees because I was afraid they were going to stab me if I sang that song for the longest time when I was little. That's how they keep you in line. That's right. You know, don't don't be naughty or the Christmas tree is going to come to life and That's kill right. you. Merry Christmas. Um, and also, we're going to yell at you if you think angels are people. That's right. Uh, so, I don't know, guys. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? No, if anybody else has any fun ones they want to yeah, mention in the, the comments, please do. Because um, there's a whole bunch out there we don't even know about. We literally have an entire drawer full of, of Christmas specials. And it is a complete drawer full. Uh, of DVDs. So, lots of lots of Christmas Neon specials. Neon loves Christmas specials. I do. I do. They're so weird. They're just freaking weird. Our, our kids have one that's a Christmas dinosaur. The Christmas dinosaur. And they want. I think actually we're asking them to watch that again. They loved it when they were little. So, anyway, I'm just saying. You can find something wrong and messed up with all these shows. But back then... Kids were, you know, it, but they were lessons. You know, kids kids were tougher than this. They didn't need, you know, everything candy coated and just coated in general uh, for whatever you wanted it to be. They actually, you know, watch stuff like, you know, blind kids get pushed into a hole because they knew it was wrong. And they knew, <laughs> they knew, they didn't need someone to tell them that. They're like, that's a crappy thing to do. I almost said the other word. That's a crappy thing to do. I, and you know, I would never do something like that. How dare they? It was basically trying to teach kids empathy and teach kids, um, you know, that you, this is like life lessons, which you're not allowed to do now. Well, first Christmas snow, at the very end, he gets his sight back. He it's does. a Christmas miracle. And then I'm pretty sure off camera, he tracks those kids down and beats the <laughs> shit out of them. Well, how do you know which ones they were? Voices. Oh, there you go. Okay. Voices. He could tell. And he just, he kicked the, or they smell bad and he can. Smell I don't them. know. You smell like tapioca. You're the kid. But he goes, I am pretty sure that's the, uh, the unaired sequel where, where uh, Lucas kicks the shit out of those kids. That's right. Yeah. I would. <laughs> Okay, let's so wrap after this Christmas, up. you don't have this to be nice after one. Christmas. Gonna wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.